Well, I went out today to try and find some suitable material to uh, make this out of. I was looking for just a block of aluminum or some bar stock, like two and a half by two and a half or two and a half by three even. It didn't matter, but I couldn't find anything big enough at the local store to make that out of. Uh, I don't feel like waiting on eBay or Speedy Metals or one of them guys to root it around in my metals bin here and I found a piece of three inch round stock with a hole in it. So I think I can get what I want out of this. That's, actually I know I can, it's just might actually be easier because I already got a hole bored through it. So. And we'll start working with that and see what we got. clunky now. It's my 1947 J Head Bridgeport. Yeah, it's some better days. Uh, let's see if she'll work for us today. I think I got the dullest end mill I can possibly find in there. mill a couple flats on either side of it and bring the diameter or the width of it down to the two and a half that the ball screw is supposed to be. And I'll flip it back up on the vise again and start milling the back side off so I'll get my pad width right. From there I can come back and bore the hole out on it and get it chewed up. Finishing off the face of this side, I indicated this, which would be the top part of the ball screw mount. Uh, that'll have the dowel that sticks up on it. I indicated this through the dial indicator, and I'm milling this off, this face off uh, parallel to it. Then when I take and go and put it in the CNC mill, this face will go up against the back of the vise, and I can indicate the top out for level, and then machine it down so it has the uh, little dowel sticking up on it. So, just kind of planning things out. You gotta use your head a little bit, you know, on how you wanna uh, indicate everything to make sure you machine it square and true. I don't know how else to explain it. It's in my head. It's right in my head, but trying to explain things sometimes, I'm terrible at it. I apologize for that. But you'll get the idea. Got the grizzly finishing off the top of it here and making that little stud that sticks up. Not a blazing fast machine, but it gets the job done. Kind of fun to watch, I guess. Looking forward to getting the uh, PM940 up and running because it could probably hog through this thing in about two minutes flat. Okay, now I'm just partially boring out the hole where the ball screw fits through. I'm going to just bore that a quarter inch deep and I'm going to take and switch over and chop it up in the lathe and uh, bore it out on the lathe. The only reason is that, you know, the Grizzly doesn't like spinning a, uh, a very large end mill and that pocket is uh, two and a half inches deep. So uh, I just don't think this machine's going to work out too good for it, so I'll go over to the tried and true old faithful lathe that I've had for like, 
I'll take uh, 25, 26 years now. And I'll use it to finish off the bore. Uh, yeah, that gives you the general idea. Yeah, this is a boring job. Uh, I went ahead and indicated out uh, where I milled the little pocket at and I indicated the face. Running pretty true in the lathe. We're gonna go ahead and open it up so that the uh, ball screw fit in there. Uh, definitely got to figure out a better way of doing this. I imagine once the uh, the PM 940 is up and running under its own power, I should be able to just mill that pocket all the way to the bottom. Make life a lot easier. Get things done a lot faster. But this will work for now. Okay, yeah, well. There it is, pretty much roughed in. Oh shit. Watch the stand. I still have to round the bottom off, cut the uh, the slits in it so I can make the clamping part, but I'm waiting on a four inch uh, slitting saw. So that'll be here in a couple days, but I'm just gonna end this video now. Uh, one thing I do notice is these are not perfectly concentric with each other. So I'm actually going to have to bore the uh, depth of this ball nut here slightly oversized and then just clamp it on the back half and the bolts will hold the front half. That'll give it the play that it needs so it can go in there and be able to rotate it and adjust it. She's snug. So We're just going to end the video here and I'm going to get started on the uh, the y-axis bearing mount block which got a couple ideas on how to do that so that's it for today yeah there it is mounted up and in there got my material for the uh, x-axis and now we're going to work on making up the mount for the bearings up here yeah, pretty interesting idea how to do that.